Hello and Namaste. We are actually going to discuss an important aspect of deciding appropriateness of various mediums to create a LED. By now you all are conversant with what is a LED, it is a learning dialogue and whenever you want to create a learning dialogue as we have seen in the content so far, there is an important decision making point which occurs, which talks about deciding the medium. Now, since there are multiple mediums available, let us just have a look at what are these mediums. There are various types where it can be videos recorded by the instructor or multiple instructors, it could be panel discussions, it could be screencast videos where capturing is done from the computer screens or other gadgets where we are showing some demonstration of a software. There are people who would love to write by hand and explain certain derivatives or mathematics. There are podcasts just having plain simple audio, that is animation which is combination of screen captures, graphics, multimedia, voiceovers, audio, everything. And there are some very rudimentary level content things also such as just textual documents or uh, presentation slides or even some videos where we are uh, taking the camera crew outside and shooting on the location. So, when we have so many modes available with us, the point is that how do we decide the appropriateness of each of this medium before we take a call of what should be the medium for my LED. Now, let us assume that you have a content, you have the domain, you have the knowledge of that domain and you are supposed to create a learning dialogue for your content. You have finalized the content, you have seen that it is correct, it is good, it is impressive content, you have also incorporated the reflection spot to make it a LED. So, the script wise you are all done with it, but the moment you decide to record it, there are so many mediums available as I just explained. Important question to be asked is that how does one decide the appropriateness of a particular medium for my LED? There are some sub questions at this point. The first question is have you analyzed what does that medium offer to you when you select it? The second one is that is that medium whatever you have selected is appropriate for the content that you have written and the third one is, is it appropriate for the learner that you are presenting to. Now, these three points actually will come up with an answer which will help you decide this thing. So, let us just slightly go into more details about what does this each medium offer. For this, I have kind of categorized them into broad categories. One of them is the instructor's video like uh, instructors, I mean it could be multiple instructors, it could be panel discussions, but what it offers is first thing is emotional connect. The moment I look into the camera and speak and you see this video on the other side, you feel that I am talking to you. So, this emotional connect is very, very important as against having just the audio of the person coming in or even worse where I am not looking at you and I am looking here and there and you are not getting that emotional connect. The eye contact is something that you will get if you record the instructor's video. You have another set of mediums. These mediums actually comprise of the content. It could be communicated in text, it could be images, it could be slides, it could be screenshots, it could be photographs, it could be graphics. What do they attribute? What do they offer you? they offer screenshot moments. Okay, what are screenshot moments? These are the moments which typically in our kind of non uh, e-learning modes was a medium to take notes. So, whatever important sentence people have written or the teachers have written on the board, we used to just copy that into our notebooks or take a diagram and then practice it or uh, remember a photograph with the details. Now, these are screenshot moments and because slides offer a concise format of content, like where the entire 15 minute session is kind of summarized into multiple bullet points. So, this 
two things are on offer when we go for slide, text, graphics, etc., etc. The third part is the screencast, where if you want to record something or you want to showcase, demonstrate a particular working of a machine or a computer or a device, then we actually capture those. This is directly coming from the system sometimes or sometimes it could be recorded by external cameras, but the effect is the same. This is where the demonstrations are recorded. Now, are you aware that what these types of mediums offer? There are multiple more mediums I am not going to discuss as of now, but there are multiple mediums available. The second question we can now pose ourselves is, is it appropriate for the content that I have selected? Okay. What is the function that these particular mediums are fulfilling moment I select them? I can see whether they are giving any visual information. Are they adding to uh, anything which has to do with visualization? If it is, then definitely I should go for the content which offer that. Automatically, podcasts are out of the race now because podcasts cannot offer you the visualization. So, look at this particular thing. If I do not show my face and my uh, video along with this thing and it is just coming as audio, then it would be very hard for you to concentrate on the topics, especially which require visual information. Second is, does your content have changed over time? If it has to show multiple things where um, you ha we have to explain that in six months, the terrain will change into something like this or moment I add this liquid, the color of the liquid will change. Now, these things have to be considered if a visual medium is offering this to you and only then you can select that. There could be some recall level requirements also like theorems and principles. So, if I have to recall them, uh, I need to see them on screen word by word and only then there is a possibility that I can recall them or maybe uh, recite them. Uh, there is one more thing that could be useful for especially mathematics teaching where there is guided discovery. The example unfolds in front of the learners step by step. Now, this is something which is done on the fly and if that is your requirement, the content requires that, then maybe handwriting is the solution. So, depending on what is appropriate for the content, you have another set of reasoning why you should select that medium. Finally, we should look at is it appropriate for the learners. Now, here there is an interesting point that we have to go through multiple preferences. There are learning preferences of the learners where it could be visual learners, there could be auditory learners, language based learners, demography uh, matters. So, all these things have to be considered and then we can select that medium. There could be other constraints such as technology uh, about devices, availability of network, power. So, we can see whether this is an interesting medium for that. For example, the bandwidth required to transmit a podcast which is a mp3 file which will take very less data as compared to a full video file which will take hundreds of mbs. So, this difference in megabytes required for the learner to download could be a constraint. So, are you aware of these constraints or are you taking into consideration? And finally, we could look at whether the learners are able to uh, recall the things by storing the content or they can take notes about it and the interaction possibilities with the content. Can they modify certain settings and see changes happening in front of their own eyes? If the learners are going to be required to do such kind of things, then your medium might change. So, now that you have seen so many considerations that you have to do before you take a decision on the medium. Have I exhausted that list? If not, then here is a reflection spot for you. Think and answer which other considerations are important to decide the appropriateness of the medium. Okay. I will pause here and like you know, since it is a reflection spot, you can answer the question and play the video once again whenever you are ready with the answer. Welcome back. 
I am sure many of you must have tried scratching their head and wearing their thinking hats to figure out what other considerations are required. Okay. So, let us start. There could be considerations of your own learning objectives that you have set for the content or your learning outcomes that you have decided that whenever I offer this content, the learners will be able to do x, y, z. If that is done, right, that could be a consideration. There could be considerations on resources, whether I have the technology to do that. Maybe I can say that you need animation here because that is the best medium, but you may not have resources for that. There could be financial constraints, there could be resources regarding timelines okay, and uh, whether you have to complete it in a given format. Okay. So, all these constraints are to be considered before you take a call about what is that you would be able to create by using which medium. So, this appropriateness discussion is kind of a interesting discussion at this point. Again for the ease of discussion, I have categorized the mediums into certain new kind of chunks. So, look at it, we have camera captures, we can have single person, multiple people, object shootings, object demonstrations, landscapes, outdoors, everything, everything which is possible by camera is one category. The second is anything via screen. So, you do not actually require a camera at times, you can just instruct the screen to be captured and show all of that in order to demonstrate a particular software or a working of a machine. Finally, it could be digitally created multimedia. Now, digitally created multimedia is something like animation, simulation and so on and so forth. And some point at the uh, overall category, there are also categories which only require certain mediums like audio only podcasts or text only documents and so on and so forth. So, we have I think have a long range of mediums available at our disposal and therefore, we have created a taxonomy of how multimedia can be chosen appropriately for this content. We have identified four important attributes that every medium will bring in. And in this table, we try to show you which medium can score a lot on the given attribute. Okay. So, with this perspective, let us now have a look at it. We have four attributes that we have to look into. The first one is the emotional connect because all this communication is for the learners and therefore, unless until they are captured by literally their attention is captured by what we are saying there is no point in doing anything. So, emotional connect is definitely one of the attribute. The second is retention because all this educational content that we are creating is for people to learn. So, whether they have retention in that is another point. Third one is visualization because we are creating multimedia does it support visualization and finally, how much are the production efforts. So, if I just take you through the rows and columns. I think I will take couple of examples. Let us take an example of a podcast to begin with. Podcast because I can hear somebody's voice and if it is a very soothing voice, good diction, good pronunciations and uh, it is going in a nice flow, I think emotional connect would be there, but because I cannot see the person it would be slightly less. So, we can place it at 2, but the retention also could be at 2 because maybe I cannot read the entire uh, definition of certain objects because it may be long by the time the definition gets over I am not able to take the notes. So, retention could be slightly hampered. Visualization will be extremely poor next to 0, but uh, production efforts will be very low because we just require a gadget which can record sound and a very rudimentary level editing system which you can just cut paste and design. So, if you look at podcast and now compare that with maybe uh, talking head where emotional connect is very high, you can see me talking to you, we have a eye contact, you can see my gestures, everything is perfectly fine. So, very high emotional connect, retention could be slightly lower because again same thing if I am explaining a long definition and you cannot read it with me, then you may lose on that. Visualization will be also very poor because 
if I am talking about maybe how eclipse happens and I am not able to show you those things, just my talking head is not going to do the communication for you. But production efforts wise also this is kind of medium because I just require one simple light system, camera, microphone and I am done. But uh, now if I compare with high level requirements in production, it could be like animation. So, animation could be uh, kind of average on emotional connect because we may not get uh, speaker, but yeah nowadays we can have avatars or maybe some uh, mascots coming and talking to you animation, uh, we can have high quality retention because I can actually show the demons, uh, the, the text about the definition and you can take a screenshot. There could be extremely high visualization because animation can show you things which otherwise camera cannot capture, but it will be extremely high on production efforts because you require animators and days and months of work goes inside creating some animation. So, I think you get a fair idea about how it works. Right. So, let us see some examples which are existing in this course itself and how and why did we take such uh, decisions while selecting the medium for this.